Hello class, today we are working with parametric relations and inverses where we will be um, discussing relations parametrically and inverse relations and inverse functions and um, some functions and graphs can uh, best be defined parametrically and if you don't know what that means we will certainly cover that and some can be uh, understood best if we um, use inverses of functions that uh, we may already know. So if you have two equations, one with an x in it and one with a y in it, and they're both defined with another variable, um, the variable would be called a parameter. So we can use the variable t as a parameter. So we could say like x equals t plus 6 and y equals t squared. Um, so t is the parameter. Now we can look at these and we can actually um, put these in a table and um, get a relation between x and y and uh, that's, the that's the first thing we're going to actually want to do here. So what we can do is we get our table and um, let's put a t here. Let's, uh, let's just do a small set of numbers and then we will set y equal to t squared and then we can set x equal to t plus 6 and let's put this um, in order so if you Combine x and y algebraically, the points 3, 9, 4, 4, 5, 1, 6, 0, 7, 1, 8, 4, 9, 9 would be points that uh, sit on the curve when we, uh, when we join the two equations. Now, how to do that is you would uh, take that algebraically. Um, we know x equals t plus 6. But if we solve for t, we get t equals x minus 6. Then what we can do to have a, uh, a relation between x and y is we can take our value for t and plug it in here. So we have y equals x minus 6 squared. And you could FOIL that out or distribute that out and you'd get x squared um, what, minus 12x plus 36. Um, and so that actually, x would be a function, y, the, the relation would be a function here. Um, and that's how you find it algebraically. And uh, so um, that's uh, parameters. And there's really nothing more to it that you need to know. Um, we're, we're good to go. So the next piece would be inverse relations. So we have an inverse relation if a comma b is a relation um, and b comma a would be its inverse. So we have a relation a comma b, the inverse relation would be b comma a. And basically what this would do is because you have this is typically your x comma y will become y comma x. What ends up happening with your graphs is they, they flip on their sides and we'll, uh, we'll show that um, in a minute. First, well, let's um, 
let's look at this algebraically. So if we have a function of x, we can say it's like x over 3x plus 2. Um, we can say, if, since we're going to be graphing these, we can say y equals x over 3x plus 2. And then since you're flipping the x and the y, You can flip the x and the y here. So we would have x equals y over 3y plus 2. Now we do not like having y in the denominator um, if we're going to solve for y. So uh, we can just go through what we know in algebra and we can say, well, let's multiply by 3y plus 2 to cancel it out of the denominator. Whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. And this, um, this process is going to happen more often than not this way. So you'll distribute the x in. You get 3xy plus 2x equals y. Then um, since we're going to solve for y, yeah, that's what we're doing here is we're solve for y. Let's bring all the y's over to one side and all the x's to the other. So we subtract 2x on both sides and then subtract the y on both sides. So we get 3xy minus y equals uh, negative 2x. Then we can factor the y. So you get y, 3x um, minus 1 equals negative 2x, and then obviously to get rid of this, you just subtract, uh, you divide 3x minus 1 on both sides, and you end up with y equals negative 2x over 3x minus 1. So this here is an inverse of this here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to graph these. So now let's graph them. Okay, so to graph these, we can get rid of that. So we've got x over 3x plus 2. And then if, uh, if you do have a, a inverse relation, um, you're gonna it's going to end up flipping over the line y equals x because all your x values become y's and all your y values become x. So um, when we're checking our work, we should see that this will happen. So it's negative 2x over 3x minus 1. And um, you see here that the blue, like this point here, 0, 0, will happen on both because 0, 0 flips to be 0, 0. Your x and your y, when they flip, they flip in the same spot. And this also, negative one-third, negative one-third is going to hit for both of them because anything that hits this line, when it flips over, it will stay on the line. Um, but then this point here is going to flip to um, up, up here, and there is going to be a, a, uh, a direct tie. So it's basically a mirror image. So your blue line and your black line are mirrors, and this blue line and this black line are also mirrors. Um, and so that's just our uh, inverse uh, relation. Um, and so uh, the last, oh, so let's see, inverse relations. The last thing we're going to do on, uh, today is discuss the inverse composition rule. And so the inverse composition rule. So if um, f of g of x has to equal x 
and g of f of x has to equal x. Um, then this is a, um, this function f is 1, 2, 1 with the function g. So we'll demonstrate this. Let's, uh, we're going to verify um, inverse functions. And uh, so right now we're, we're trying to um, see if it's a uh, inverse function. Um, and before we were just talking about relations, so now we care, are these both, um, is it an inverse function? So, um, an inverse relation isn't necessarily always going to be an inverse function because an inverse function has to be defined as uh, functions. So, let's look at an example. So, we have f of x equals x cubed plus 2 and g of x equals, say, cube root of x minus 2. So to check if these are inverse functions of each other, um, algebraically, you're gonna, we're going to look at f of g of x. When, so g of x is, is this piece here. We're just going to toss that here. And so we have the cubed root of x minus 2 cubed plus 2. Now, you should see that cubed root and cube disappear. So we have x minus 2 plus 2. These cancel out. So f of g of x is equal to x. So that follows this rule right here. So now we need to check the other way. Is if we throw this piece and for this value of x, you would get um, g of f of x equals the cubed root of, instead of x, we have to toss in x cubed plus 2 minus 2. Um, there's nothing to distribute with this, so we can actually just drop the parentheses, x cubed plus 2 minus 2, that goes away. The cubed root of x cubed also cancel out, so g of f of x also equals x. So in fact, these are inverses, um, or are inverse functions. Yes. Um, and if that didn't work out where they're both equal to x, then, uh, then they're not. Thank you for the lesson today, and I will see you in class.